All right, here we go. This is uh, Pacific Raceways number two. Uh, oh, yeah, neutral lap, yeah, yeah, so they, uh, you know, I thought that we were supposed to take it easy for the first lap. They're like starting, starting the fields, you know, one after the other. And, you know, if you go super hard on the first lap, then you, you like catch the last field before they get a chance to start. But whatever, here we go. There's an attack from the gun. Um, yeah, so the, this, uh, this time we're doing the flat version of this course. So the last video that I uploaded for Pacific Raceways, we were doing, it's called the Escape Route, and it's got like a one minute climb on it. This version of the, the course is super duper flat. Yeah, so... Oh. Bike racing is fun. It's always weird at the start of the race, though. Everybody's everybody's got a ton of energy in their legs. You can see, like, the field is just, like, all broken up here. As some people are chasing the brake back, and, you know, other people are sitting in, and, you know, it's all going to come back together, though. Like, nobody's, nobody's going to let a brake get up the road right now. Um, and I know that for sure, because I have a teammate who is working for me in this race, and... Uh, we discussed beforehand, it is his job to make sure that if a brake goes up the road, that he'll just pull me up to it. You can see him coming up on the left here, that's Kyle. Kyle is very strong and uh, doesn't have the time to regularly show up at this race, so he's uh, not trying to go for the series, but um, he, uh, he definitely could uh, probably take it. He won it last year. Um, he's actually got a number one number on him. And we're coming back up to him so you can see him again there. Oh yeah, and so uh, of course like a counterattack goes right away. Um, but, you know, I'm just not worried at this point in the race. It's just not not going to be a problem. So, yeah. I don't remember why I so much time here, I don't have much to say. Oh yeah, check this out. So this is the uh, drag strip that we're going over right now. So they actually use this for drag racing, and it's covered in rubber. So it's like super shiny, and um, the uh, it's really grippy when it's dry, but apparently when it gets at all wet, it just turns into glare ice. So that's uh, that's the reason that they'll they'll do the escape route usually is. There's a little bit of rain. They'll they'll have us go around the drag strip. I wish they would just do that by default. It's it's more fun. All right. And with this, you can see us just about to finish a full lap of the course. Um, there's just this one little bend left. Disregard the map in the lower right. I don't know. It's just crazy. I should probably just remove that from the video. Maybe I will. Actually, maybe you won't even see a map down there because. Uh, because I removed it because it's it's not helpful at all. <laughs> all right, so this is the uh, finishing stretch, and you can see like uh, it takes us about three and a half minutes to uh, do a lap, a little bit more than that for this first lap. Uh, you can hear there, they're calling out that this is not a points race. Um, <laughs> which, so I had thought, in fact, it, it was announced ahead of time that this would be points per lap. So the first person across the line, each lap would get a point. Um, and so I would like the plan was that I was going to try and get as many points as I could by uh, getting these intermediate sprints. Uh, and <laughs> So you'll see in a little bit that there's just a ton of confusion around whether it's points per lap or not. If I was actually listening there and I could understand what the guy said, I, I would have heard that it's no points per lap. You can see we're just starting our second lap and we're just catching, I don't know what field this is, um, four fives, the masters, probably the four fives. And so we're like neutralizing them. They just came out of the gate. 
And that's why you take it easy on the first lap, so that we don't have to do this kind of weirdness to the other people who are out on the course. Like, for the most part, if you, uh, if you just, like, ride your pace, you know, like, the fields generally don't interact. But, you know, like, maybe towards the end of the race, we might, we might catch one of the other fields. So, uh, this section of the course has a pretty solid tailwind. Um, which both means that it's faster here, and you don't get quite as good of a draft as you do going the other direction. Um, it means it's a good place to attack, you know. But I've got Kyle, and Kyle will not let anything get away. <laughs> so this is Kyle pulling back his uh, first break of the day. Not not too far off the front. Didn't have to do a ton of work, but we still got the solo guy going. Oh, yep, yeah, and it looks like Kyle's pulling him down. I'm doing like 320 watts in his draft, so I imagine Kyle's probably doing like 450, 500 watts on the front. You know, I want you to notice uh, something that he does right when we catch up to this rider here. So usually what happens is when you catch a break, then immediately a, a counterattack goes. Like, for, well, first everybody will slow down um, because they just they just chase down a break and they're tired. Um, and then immediately a counterattack will go. But you can see Kyle just like pulls around and he, he keeps motoring for a little bit. And so if there was a counterattack, then we would be we would find it pretty easy to just hop on the wheel of whoever came around. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it calms the race down a little bit to uh, to control the front like this. So you can see Kyle's getting off the gas here. Oh, actually, yeah, so this is the uh, the next time through the start-finish. Like, I knew the first lap wasn't a uh, point, but I thought this lap was the first lap that counted. And so right now I'm, like, wondering, like, why isn't Kyle bringing me up to the front? You know, it's my job to hold his wheel. It's his job to pull me up to the front of this group so that I can go, go get across the line first and get one more point. Um, so, yeah, I'm just confused. I'm just, like, waiting, waiting, waiting and he doesn't go. So I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know, maybe he was tired from pulling back that break. See, in this moment, I should have said something. I should have been like, hey, Kyle, what's going on? But I didn't. We do start talking later, but I should have started talking sooner. So here you can see uh, Peter Kim. He's on the left right now in the it says zoom drain on his side. He's in a Gene Johnson kit. So Peter Kim is a really good sprinter, and his team, the Gene Johnson team, is really organized. And so they do a really good job of getting him into position and making sure that he's, he doesn't have to do any work during the race. He's the main person that I'm looking out for. I'm, not, I'm definitely not a pure sprinter. I can't really compete with pure sprinters in a sprint. So he's like the main rider that I'm, I'm worried about. So here we're, we're coming to the line again. We've got Kyle on the front. Wayne, one of my other teammates, is right behind him. You know, I've got a lead out. I'm on Peter's wheel. I'm, I'm ready for... I'm ready to go pip a point. You know, try and hold on to his wheel and see if I can come around. I see somebody coming up on the left and hit the gas and... Go, go earn my point. Probably shouldn't have burned such a big match, but that first sprint of the day I always feels really easy. You can see I'm looking around behind me because nobody is following me. And I'm just wondering, like, are they just going to let me go get the point? So I guess the answer is yes. So, right now I think, like, I probably got a point, but, like, why didn't anybody chase? And so actually, you just heard somebody calling out that it's not point per lap. I think that was Wayne telling me it wasn't point per lap, and then Kyle comes and tells me it wasn't point per lap, and so I'm like, oh, okay, all right, so there's no no points on the line, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but I see this uh, 
break going up the road and I decide that I'm going to hop onto this, uh, this guy's wheel and work my way up. I really should have just stayed behind Kyle. That's what Kyle advised me to do, was just to stay on his wheel. But, you know, I was antsy, I wasn't quite sure, you know, I didn't want to, didn't want to break to get up the road. I can see that this, uh, this group has the right mix if they roll. You know, we've got a Gene Johnson guy, we've got, um, this Audi guy. And then I watch Peter, Peter goes for the line here. And so he did the, the same thing I did, thinking that it was point per lap, and yet it is not. Yet you could hear as I went across the line that they were ringing the bell. So the next lap is a pre, but I don't understand that. Um, oh my god, my video cut and paused. You gotta be kidding me. Don't you ruin my audio. Well, I hope that... God, it's all misaligned now. Oh, you know, I got it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Anyway, so Peter also made the mistake, but one of his teammates rolled up and told him, told him that uh, he didn't need to do that. So anyway, so we're on a preem lap now, but I don't realize that because I was watching Peter sprint for the line and watching him make the same mistake, and I didn't hear the bell, and, you know, I just knew that it wasn't point per lap. Um, we were on a preem lap, so we're going to watch me do a terrible job of doing my role in this, uh, in this race, which is to stay on Kyle's wheel and try and get as many points as possible. The preem laps are, of course, worth points. you actually get any goodies for the cream laps. I have not gotten a cream lap so far in this series, I don't think. I can hear somebody behind me calling me out, calling out that they're on my wheel. I have no idea who that is. It's probably Wayne. And Wayne is doing some sweeping work, but at the at the time I'm like, oh, I wonder who that is. You know, it could have been anybody at that point. You always wonder that in the middle of a race, if you just start calling out things to uh, people who aren't on your team, if you could get away with that. This, uh, this expedition guy in the green kit is like really really interested in getting on Kyle's wheel, so I had to fight a little bit for that. You know, he sticks out because he's, uh, he's number one, won the series last year. He's pretty well known, I imagine, for his strength. So here's the lead out. I was pulling me up there. Right now I'm wondering, like, why are we surging so hard? What's the purpose of this surge? You know, I just think that there are no points anymore. It's just, we're just racing for the finish. And so Kyle actually gets around Peter here. Like, if I could have just, like, uh, left Kyle's wheel, I might have been able to get to the line before Peter. I don't know. Peter probably would have gotten me. But regardless, but you can see, now we're, at, now we're finally talking. I asked, I thought it was, I thought it was points, no points per lap, and he's like, it's a preem, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. And so now we're actually, you know, paying attention. So he jumped forward quite a lot here. Um, now we're like, I think, 31 minutes into the race, and Kyle is back on the front working. So a break is up the road, Kyle is on the front, and he's putting out some huge watts to be able to pull this group down. We're only going 30 miles an hour, but there's a strong headwind here. I just wanted to both both to sing Kyle's accolades for doing this this good work, but this is a really good example of what you do for your teammates when you're in a domestique role. You know, if there's a, a break up the road and it's it's threatening and you want to protect somebody, then you uh, pull the group back, pull the group up to the break. Um, and Kyle did that. I don't know. I want to say five times this race. Yeah, you can see again here he's discouraging the counterattack by staying on the front and keeping the pace up. You know, that doesn't stop this uh, found guy from rolling, Premier at the front, 
Gene Johnson. And so I kind of look back and think for a second, and I'm like, wait a second. So this has all of the big teams that I'm worried about in it. We've got Gene Johnson, we've got Fount, we've got Premier. Um, this is a move that could make it, but it immediately uh, shuts down. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the name of the game. So I would love to get away in a breakaway with uh, a breakaway that would actually hold. And like a big thing about getting a breakaway to stick is making sure that that breakaway has representatives from all the teams that might want to chase it down. You can hear me now. I'm talking to, to Kyle, telling him I'm on. Oh yeah, and I wanted to show this segment because, so you can see there was an attack that was coming from way in the back on the right side, and you heard people calling, up, up, up. What they're trying to do is get other people to accelerate and close the gap so that they can ride in the draft. So when somebody yells, up, up, up at you, they're probably, you know, trying to get you to do work when you don't necessarily need to do work. You know, basically anytime somebody says, up, 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 you know, don't listen. <laughs> there, I can't imagine a single time where somebody said that to me in a race, and it actually should have been my responsibility to uh, close down the gap. So, uh, as you can see, like, this lane that we're in right now is two-way traffic. Um, you know, and so we really should be on the right side of that center line. I don't know why, but everybody loves to ride over on the left side of the center line. Um, you know, there wasn't, like, a crosswind that this really made a difference for. We're basically in a tailwind right now. Um, yeah, I don't know why people like to ride on the left side of this line. Just gotta say that because it bothers me. You know, there's oncoming traffic coming in this lane. Um, but here we can see uh, Wayne's up at the front. He's uh, closing down to this uh, this break. This break isn't super threatening, but it's. I'm really glad that Wayne's doing the work to uh, close it down so that I can uh, sit in and save my legs. Let's see. Oh yeah, so now we're setting up for preem number two. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but Wayne is behind me telling me that Peter, my main my main competition, the person I'm most worried about, is on my left. Um, so he's on the, the wheel of this Gene Johnson guy that we can see on my left, the zoom drain leg. Um, and so it's Kyle's job to try and get me as close to the line as possible before he drops me off. And it looks like these expedition guys are going first, so we're gonna we're gonna follow him. This time I actually know what the hell we're doing, and I am ready. I'm ready to go. So Kyle opens it up. We're in a hard headwind here. This is early. Like, I came around super early because I looked to my left and I saw that Peter was kind of boxed in. Uh, and so I hoped that by coming around early I might discourage him from following. But uh, but he was, uh, he was both ready to go. And as soon as the acceleration happened, everything opened up. And that's that's pretty much true of any sprint. Whenever whenever everybody, everybody accelerates, suddenly there's tons of space. All right, and here we are again with uh, with Kyle pulling back another group up the road, letting me get a, a nice draft while we roll. I don't I don't deserve such a good domestique, to tell you the truth. It's I felt. I feel bad. It's such a such good teammate working for you. It's a beautiful thing. You know. Yeah, here we go to the left of the center line again. I don't know why people do this. Like, why are we doing this? I don't want to be over here. He admit, like maybe like Jesse's at the front now. Maybe he's like kind of hypoxic. Who knows? Honestly, I'm not sure what he's doing at the front. You know, making the race fast, but everybody's in the draft. I don't know what this clip is. Yep. 
don't know what we're looking at here. I think this is maybe just uh, just some pedaling. This is like what most of the race is, you know. So because I was the protected sprinter in this race, if you can call me a sprinter, um, it was my job to be bored. Like, it is my job to spend as much time riding behind other people and not putting in any sort of effort as possible. Yeah. And now you get to experience it, you the viewer get to experience the boredom of being a protected sprinter. Experience, experience the reality of bike racing on this, uh, on this YouTube channel. But I suppose this is a good example of like, uh, this guy in the flower jersey. He, uh, he really wanted to get on Kyle's wheel and everything was, uh, everything was pretty calm. Like, he, he pushed me pretty hard there. Um, and, you know, I was, I was pretty fine with that, you know. I don't need to be immediately on Kyle's wheel under most circumstances. Like, if he's leading me out, I want to be on his wheel. But under any other circumstance, like, he's going to end up pulling the whole group back. So all I have to do is hang out in the group if he's ever pulling a breakaway back. up my video so hopefully the uh, the audio is still in sync we will see I really would like to not have to record this whole thing again that would be very nice Expedition really wanted Kyle's wheel. I think that's actually Liquid Veil, but it just says Expedition on their back. Just wait until you see the next video. There's a there's a team that has like uh, jerseys that look like a, a donut with sprinkles on it, so I get to call them sprinkles. I think it's a uh, 10 speed hero, but I mean, if you have a jersey with sprinkles on it, your name is now Sprinkles. Like, it'd be cool. People can call me Apex. Got Apex on my jersey. Just riding bikes. I should probably be in bed. Like, staying up late, eating candy narrating videos for you, my audience, because I love you, and I want you to have entertainment and information. There we go, one to go. Now we're at the, uh, the end of the race. Everything always gets really slow for the last lap. You know, it's kind of nice. Everybody else is off the course. Um, all the other, all the other groups finish before we finish. Um, you can hear him talking to Kyle. Tell him I'm on his wheel. And from now until the end of the race, I will fight anybody who wants this wheel. This is this is my wheel, and I will I will keep it. It's pretty easy when we're going slow like this to uh, keep the position that you want. You know, like one thing that I'll do, it's kind of hard to see from the view that I have here, but you know, if somebody comes to my right and starts trying to push me off of Kyle's wheel, I'll actually move a little bit to the left and get really close to his, his feet, like at my front wheel, so that it's right next to his pedaling foot. 
and then I can get my elbow like right over the top of his back wheel. And that's like the best position to defend. It's also a dangerous position. If Kyle were to suddenly turn, he would he would take me down, but that's the risk you take to uh, to protect a wheel. like there actually is an attack that goes up the road. God, I don't remember that from the race. You know, a last lap attack is pretty hardcore. Unlikely to work. You can see there's another field just finishing to our left there. And the, the brake is caught. We just have a string of people keeping it fast. You can see the front of this group is uh, full of Gene Johnson. You can see uh, right in front of uh, Kyle there is uh, is my my main concern, Peter Kim. Here I'm fighting fighting a Fount Rider for. Uh, Kyle's wheel. This is my job. I'm supposed to keep this, keep this wheel. So I, here I am on the left of Kyle, fighting for, fighting for his wheel, just like I discussed a little while ago. See, it's just basically all Gene Johnson riders. Just letting Kyle know that I'm still here. We've got Wayne at the front, keeping it fast, but he's really just being a, an extra lead out man for Gene Johnson at this point. It's okay, it's not a bad place to be. So here goes Kyle. I again fight for his wheel, and I have it. I'm thinking like, don't go early this time, don't go early, and he sat down a little bit quicker than I thought, it's okay, give it everything that I had, which was not much at this point, I was already cramping up, this is actually the second race that I did this day, but got third, 